reason people, Boo Bear here and welcome to my channel. And today we're going to be looking at, well, we're going to be looking at setting up Instant Composer um, in Reason, talking out on five different MIDI channels and back into Reason at the same time. And we can actually record this live. Obviously, we've got drag and drop within um, Instant Composer as well. I have done videos in the past, but it's usually more on one MIDI track to sort of one MIDI track. So we're going to look at how we can get that all configured up uh, within Reason. We, yes, we are going to be using something called Curfew Elements, which is going to be the host for Instant Composer. We're also going to be using some loopbacks and getting the loopbacks um, configured back into Reason. And in this video, I'm actually going to go through every single step of the way. So. Let's uh, jump in straight away. And I think the first thing we need to look at is probably some uh, some MIDI loopbacks. So let's set up a MIDI loopback on our PC. It's very, very straightforward to do. If you're using, uh, obviously, a Mac, you've got it already built into the, the ICA bus and there's a way of configuring up. And I'll make sure in the description you'd see how to do that. But on a PC, um, I tend to use this MIDI package called Loop MIDI. There's a few other software packages up on this site which are worth having a look at. Yes, it might be a little bit of an old software, uh, but I've actually been using it for years and years and years and years. And it does what it says on a tin. It's just a simple loop back and that's what I'm after. If I'm after something a little bit more, I do load up something called uh, MIDI Ox, which is definitely worth downloading. Now for me to download this, I just need to right click and select, click, uh, select on open. Obviously that's the file, I'm gonna click save. It's gonna load it up and here we go. Nice and simple. And then you can just simply run the setup. It's already telling me, obviously the software's already set up on my machine. Do I wish to repair it or uninstall it? You do get a couple of options when you set this up for the first time. And one of the options is, is to run it on startup. So do run it on startup. Um, and basically you're gonna tick most of other th options there and you just say select uh, install and it'll install. And that is it, it will be installed. There'll be nothing more. So let's actually have a look at Loop MIDI working and here it is. Uh, so you'd only probably have that one line. To add a new port, you literally come down here, type in a new name, new port. Well, that's nice and original, isn't it? Click on this plus sign and there we go. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, there it is, there's my new port ready to go. If I want to remove it, there's a little minus, so I can remove it. And the button next to it is what's called a mute port. Um, do keep an eye on the mute. Uh, if you get, um, if you set yourself up to a MIDI feedback, you can soon uh, cause this to mute out because obviously you've got MIDI going round, round, round and it just overloads the system. Um, in Reason, you'll actually see kind of like MIDI buffer overruns and things like that. And it is worth just coming out and just double checking that that is actually not muted and it's still running perfectly okay. But apart from that, that is, that is loop MIDI, just an about screen, an advanced, never touched, and a setup. Very basic, very straightforward. That's my MIDI loop back now running on the PC. So the next part of the setup is to get our MIDI data, which obviously is coming back from our loop back, into Reason itself. And we can do that by, we have to set up what's called control services. Again, I'm gonna put a link to this particular website where this is where we're gonna load down our, our maps and our codecs, um, which is gonna allow us to get us to our individual MIDI channels. Um, so a lot of people say you cannot have multiple MIDI channels coming into Reason. Yes, you can. I've, I've actually set Reason up that is receiving 32 MIDI channels at the same time. Um, yes, I have had some MIDI issues with MIDI overruns, as I said before, you soon start filling up the buffers. But this site is a great site. As I say, I put the link in and there's a lot of really good information up on this site. So it's really worth going through this. Um, loads and loads and loads of lovely reason stuff. Um, it's also got like step guides of how to set this up, which we're going to go through anyway ourselves. And at the bottom, we've got obviously the files that we need to download. So it's just a simple case of just clicking on the link. I'm actually going to right click and say open in private window. The only reason I'm doing that is it's on the OneDrive and um, I don't log in using Microsoft stuff, so it tries to try and log me in. Uh, so here's the file. It's just a simple Kodak file. We can click on save. There it is. Nice little zip file. We can open it up. And it's got these two bits in it, codecs and maps. So what I'm going to do is right click, click on copy, and the location where you need to store them on the Windows will be in your C drive under program data. And then we just need to scroll down and go to head software and remote. Then I'm just going to right click and click on paste. It's going to ask me destinations already exist. I'm going to click on this, do this for all current items, click on yes. 
I'm going to say replace all the, the files because I've already got the files existing. You probably won't have that prompt, you won't have your files existing. And that's it done. That is the codex actually installed on your system. What we need now to do now is configure it in Reason so we can actually make use of it. So just before I go and add all my control services in Reason, I'm going to actually set myself up a, uh, a proper name so I can follow it. As I say, I've got so many MIDI ports set up. If I don't do this, I'm going to start to lose track. And I'm going to give this name uh, Curseview because we're going to actually load up a, a VST called Curseview and um, you can see how that works with all the multiple MIDI ports actually in action. So I need to click on the plus. And all I need to do now is restart reason so if reasons running you've got to restart it now reasons has restarted let's um, go under edit preferences under control surface and now we can actually start adding our controllers so i'm going to click on add manual under manufacturer we're going to select other this is where we can see all our midi control well these, these are our, our actual our midi channels uh, we, we can now select, that's from that codex that we actually loaded up. So I'm going to select the first one because I want channel number one. I can now come down to my import and select that new import, which I called Kirschview. So there it is, Kirschview. And what I tend to do is I actually, in this name, you can call it whatever you want. I do shorten it down. I usually give it the MIDI port name. So I'm going to call it Kirschview and I just don't want them in, in characters. And I'm going to just go click OK and it will come up with this little error. Don't worry about it, it's talking about the outports because there was an import and an output. We're not going back to a, a, a MIDI controller so we can just totally ignore that. And that's it, it's selected and ready to go. But there is actually a couple of issues. Let me just first of all double double check down here to make sure, great, it's, it's removed it. Make sure that Kershaw doesn't it's not repeated down here. So make sure your, your MIDI report is not repeated down here with a tick. If it's down here and it's got a tick, you're gonna have issues. But there's also uh, another issue here. And I deliberately set my reason up in a way that I didn't have a master keyboard. So when I configured this, it's made this the master keyboard. Why is that an issue? Well, if you've got a device, and actually I can actually just write select this um, combinator over here. If you look down here, these are all controllers that I can lock to this combinator. But if you look down there, you cannot see my Kershaw one. It doesn't exist. So what I've got to actually do is, whoops, just bring preferences back up again and say, use no master keyboard in this particular case. In fact, I, I am actually gonna, the next one I make is gonna make the, that the master keyboard and so on and so forth. So I need to just sort that out. So now if I go back, and I'm going to right click on uh, my combinator. You can suddenly see Curse View 1, and I can lock that now to that particular device where, as I say, if it said, if that was the master, you cannot lock the master. So make sure it's not the master device. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to make a second one. Other, we want channel number two. We're going to go for the same port because it's Curse View. And then we're just going to hit delete that out. Type in Curseview. And here's my output. As I say, I don't select that. We leave that blank. And we're going to click OK. Same error as before. So we're going to click OK. But this time, we've also got this exclamation mark on both these new controllers we've set up. So if we just click on it, all it's letting us know is we're actually using the same MIDI port which we already know. We're, we're using the same MIDI port, but we're talking on different channels. So that's perfectly okay. And as I say, if you noticed, it's made this one the master keyboard. So you just have to make sure, you know, if you've already got a master keyboard set, it's gonna leave that one as the master keyboard. I deliberately removed my master keyboard just in case someone fell into this trap and they were right clicking and going, oh, where's my options? I can't see them. Because it's quite a classic one to fall into. Uh, it's an easy one to fall into. So I'm now going to just make myself up just a few more controllers and then I'm going to demonstrate actually using five MIDI channels at the same time.
And as I said before, just remember, like in my particular case, you probably won't have to do this. I knew that had the master keyboard, so I just got to tell it to use no master keyboard. So let's put this all together and actually see it in action. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just going to quickly paste in some device and tracks. And then what I'm able to do now is I can obviously come down to each instrument. I can right click it and I can lock obviously each of my MIDI channels to a different device. I've even got a combinator in here, so I'm going to lock one to a, a combinator. As you can see, I've got a mixture of VSTs and obviously Reason devices itself. Then what I'm actually going to do now is, is actually create myself a curse view. There it is, curse view elements. And let's open this up and it's probably opened up on the wrong screen. So let me just go and grab that across. And what you've got to do is open it up fully. So you need to drag the handle and pull it way down. Because here's, here's your audio out if you need to play with it. This is a MIDI in, which we can use in Reason. This MIDI out, we can't use in Reason because this is like you'd use this in uh, other doors. So in other doors, you'll actually be able to use that output. Um, and Curse View works very well in other doors. And why might you want to use Curse View in other doors? Well, it's a bit like a, a combinator. You can actually build yourself and stack up loads and loads of different instruments. Um, and you also use MIDI in, MIDI out, audio ins. You can obviously set up audio ins as well as out as well. So you can build yourself like quite nice little mini combinators for other doors. But here we go. We're in Reason. So what we need to do is I'm going to right click and I'm actually going to go to MIDI output devices. And yep, yeah, you've guessed it. We need to go and find our curse view one. There it is. I'm going to select it. And there's another little gotcha. What you've got to do, and I'm, what I've done is I've actually double clicked on this and opened on another screen again. So it's going to bring this over here. And we've got this um, output latency. And you have to bring this right down. And really, I should be playing it. Because if you go too far, you, you don't hear anything. It just it just stops. It won't push anything out of the output. Um, but you'd notice there's actually quite a bit of a latency, I find. So by having a minus number, so what's actually happening internally in Curse View, I cannot say, but having this minus number, I have zero latency at all when I'm playing stuff coming into Curse View. I'm just going to click OK. And now let's go and grab ourselves a plugin. So let's go and have a quick look at uh, Insta. And if we scroll down, you can see I've got my chords, scales, composers. So let's grab composer. Again, it's actually open Composer on another screen, but before I drag it across, I'm going to quickly wire it up. So my MIDI out is going to go to the MIDI in, so that's the two orange bits. And in fact, I should be able to just zoom in a little bit here. So there we go. So I connected them two orange ones up, and I'm going to click that orange one up to there. These green ones here, these are your audio, so you can obviously send your audio out if you wish to. But I'm only interested in the MIDI at this very moment in time. So what I'm going to do now is grab across Hey, here's our instant composer. Got nothing set up whatsoever. Um, should we just go and grab anything from the factory? I don't know. <sighs> Something like that. Um, there's nothing set up, obviously, there for channel one. So I'm going to quickly make sure number one is highlighted down here. And I'm going to select the big go button. Bang. And we've got some chords. Oh, sorry, we've got chords. We've got some uh, notes which have been um, uh, appeared at the top. Now, I've got a choice where I can either hit start uh, or um, I can actually play a note on my keyboard. And as we've set up Curse to not to have any latency, I'm just gonna quickly play one note on my keyboard and let's see what we've got. There might be something there I don't like or a bit too loud. To be honest, I think track number two is just that little bit too loud. So I'm going to go down here, select track number two. Obviously we've got all kinds of different preferences um, here which we can obviously play around with. I want to have it less population, so I'm gonna click on go. So we've got, there we go, we've got something actually going quite nicely and quite quickly. Now I'm going to give you one other quick tip as well, what we can actually do is, don't forget, you can actually save this. So if I quickly pop into my sounds, 
And let's scroll down. Where's my VSTs? There's my VSTs. I've actually got a VST which I've called Instant Composer, which I'm going to pull out. It's got the same kind of configurations which um, we've just put into that VST, but obviously it saves me having to re go over it. So if I quickly open that up, it's opened up on the wrong screen. Let me drag it across. There you go. In fact, I've even got us playing around with an instant chord as well, but here we go. Sounds like it's going a bit too fast, so I can bring the tempo down, obviously, in my doors. I bring my tempo down in the door here. It's actually brought the tempo down. And can you just bear with me one second, because it's got to go and flip screens. It's brought my tempo down here. When you uh, load Curse View up, I remember to um, use the external tempo if you want to you obviously use your doors tempo. Um, and again, an instant composer as well. There's obviously, there is an option. I think this is loaded up on the wrong screen again. So let me go and grab this and pull it across. We've got a sync option here as well if we wish to sync it. And as you can see, it's actually already synced to the door. So it's already configured it to that 114. So all looks really good. All looks working. All I can left for me to say is thank you for watching. And I suppose bye for now.